what's up y'all and welcome back to my channel welcome to part three of my makeup collection so today's video is going to consist of bronzers highlighters and face palettes um, I will leave timestamps down below so if you're only interested in one of these categories you can skip forward but um, yeah without further ado let's go ahead and jump into bronzers Okay, so we are going to start with all of my creams and liquid bronzers right here. Um, the liquids are here, the creams are here. I do have quite a few to go through, but let's go ahead and start with these right here, these sort of poofy applicator, like the beauty wand type things. I do have a video up on my channel with like in-depth reviews of all of these, so I'm not going to stay on these too long. I'm going to swatch them real quick, just tell you if I enjoy them, if I don't, and then we'll move on to some of the other ones. So let's go ahead and start with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand Contour. I have the shade Fair Light, and this is a really nice product. I do enjoy it. I like the shade of it. I like that it's more of a contour color. I just don't like the applicator. Like it's messy, it's gross, it's nasty, but for the price you can't really beat it. And then let's do the Milani Conceal and Perfect Contour Wand. I have the shade um, Honey and this is, it's a lot like the the elf one I don't like the applicator of it is is more of a warm tone this doesn't pull too warm on me it does look really pretty I like the tone of it I like the consistency but again I just don't like the applicator where they don't lock I prefer it to lock moving on to flower beauty this is the low light liquid contour and I have the shade light and this is an awful product like can you see? It's just, it's a mess. It exploded. My applicator broke. Like, this this is not good. The pigmentation, like, that's just, even putting it on, it's patchy. It's awful. I don't like this. I don't recommend it. It's awful. It will probably, well, not probably, it will go away at the end of the year, but for now, it's in my collection, so I'm going to show it. The Physicians Formula Butter Glow Bronzer. I have the shade Fair Light. This is beautiful. This is probably my favorite one out of all of the contour wands. I use it a lot. I like the consistency, the color. I like how it applies. I like how it wears. I like the smell. It does smell like their Butter Glow line. And this is a beautiful one. It does lock. I just wish that it had a better shade range. The Tarte is really, really nice. The Tarte is up here as well with the Charlotte Tilbury. Actually, this one is well. The three of these all are like neck and neck, but this one has the shade range going for it. So let's talk about the Tarte. I have the shade Soft Bronze, and again, it's one of those that locks, which we love. And this is a beautiful product as well. Like, it's pigmented, it has a lot of it. It's a little bit more on the liquidy side, but it still performs really, really nice. I can wear it over and under powder products. Most of these I can. This is beautiful. This one is really close to the Charlotte Tilbury as well, except this one has a better shade range than the Charlotte Tilbury. And then of course we have the Charlotte Tilbury herself. I have the shade Fair Medium. This is a beautiful product, yes. It's only like a few dollars more than the Tarte, and it is pretty. I like the consistency, I like the shade, but if I had to choose one without ever having like any of them in my collection, I would probably go for the Physician's Formula and then the Tarte if I couldn't find my shade in the Physician's Formula. I just, I like these two better. This one's a few dollars cheaper than the Charlotte Tilbury, but a few bucks is a few bucks. But um, again, the Physician's Formula is still my favorite out of all of the contour wands. Okay, we have two more liquid bronzers. So let's go ahead and start with the Shantakai Radiance Gel Bronzer. This is the shade, does it have a shade? No, I don't think it does. I think this is the only one that they have, which is one of the things that I hate about it, this is a beautiful product. It is a very gel-like consistency, and it looks beautiful on the skin. It does look a little scary when I'm putting it on my arm, but once you put it on, let me show you, it just blends out beautifully. It really does. It does not take a, little, a lot. Less is more. It looks very orange, and... 
Yes and no. Like if I put too much on, it can really, really pull orange. But I like to wear this on the days that I wear my skin tints. So I'm not putting on a lot anyway. So if I take just a little bit and I start to sheer it out in my skin, it doesn't look super orange. Like it looks very intimidating right here because it is. But it's one of the warmest ones I have in my collection. I don't wear it a whole lot because of the color because I do have to be careful with it. And I just hate the shade range. I wish they would come out with more shades in this because the consistency and the formula is beautiful. It's just the shade range is crap. And then last we have the Tarte Key Largo Bronzing Drops. So um, I did mention in my speed review that I enjoy this as like a liquid bronzer or a mix in with um, a foundation that's too light. But as a liquid bronzer, it's beautiful. This is going to be stunning in the summer. The shade is perfect for me. It looks super glowy on camera, but in person, it just adds just a beautiful, like, sun-kissed glow. Like, she's been at the beach. She's had her water. She's healthy. And she's hydrated. And her skin is just radiant. This is a beautiful product. I like it. But I have stated before, I don't have any of like the Drunk Elephant or anything like that. So I don't have it, anything to compare it to. But I do really enjoy the Tarte um, bronzing drops. I think they're beautiful. Okay, so these are my cream bronzers right here. Let's go ahead and start with these ones that are more like in a pot. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the Makeup by Mario One. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in Light Medium. And... This is a favorite, as you can tell, I absolutely adore this. This is probably like if I could only keep one, this is the cream bronzer that I would keep, like hands down, no questions asked. I just, I love it. I love the consistency. I love how it's buildable. I love how it's sheer. It just, it's so lightweight on the skin and it doesn't wear very well over powder products, but it looks beautiful under powder products. and. It just, it still shines through even whenever I put powder over top of it. I love this one. This is one that I would definitely repurchase when I run out of it. Chanel, the Chanel Le Beige, what is it? Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. I have the shade 390 Soleil Tan Bronze and this is another one that I absolutely love. I love this one more in the summer which is why I don't use it a whole lot now just because it does have a little bit more of like a warm undertone to it. Mine is still, it's still creamy. You kind of have to break through that seal when you don't use it for a little while but it just it looks so beautiful on the skin it melts in absolutely beautiful this is not too orange on me I like the shade but like I said I like it more in the summer just because it is a little bit more on the warm tone now this is also not the reformulated version once again I've heard that they have destroyed the reform reformulated version it's just not as pretty as the original but I love this. It's still good. And as long as it's still good, I will continue to use it because I know this thing is long since expired, but it doesn't smell. There's nothing growing in it. The shade is beautiful. She was not cheap and I absolutely love this. Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer. This is the Cheeks Out freestyle cream bronzer. I have the shade 01 Amber and this one is very very cool tone. This is a contour shade for me and this is not my favorite. I think it's more of maybe the shade than it is the actual product. I wanted I wanted to try something more for contouring and this is almost too gray on my skin like it's almost a little bruisey. I have to be careful how I apply it and where I apply it. I would like to get another one that's in more of like, I guess maybe the next shade up. But I can get away with it. It's just I don't do a lot of contouring. I don't really enjoy it. So this doesn't get a whole, whole lot of use in my collection. Although the formula is beautiful. For me, I think more than anything, it's just a color thing. The NARS Cream Bronzer. Oh, this is a stunning bronzer. I have the shade Laguna 01. 
and I love this thing. It is so pretty. I love the tone. I love the consistency. It's so creamy. It just glides on my skin beautifully. The tone is perfect. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. I love it. I absolutely do. Like the hype is real with the, um, the NARS cream bronzer. It really is. I tried years ago to use like the original Laguna bronzer, the powder one, and the shade never worked out for me. I probably could now that they have a different shade range, but um, I love this. I think it's beautiful. I enjoy it a lot. This is another one that I would absolutely repurchase it. It's kind of neck and neck with the makeup by Mario. It really is because the formula is just so beautiful, but I like the consistency of the makeup by Mario just a touch more than the NARS that if I had to choose one, I would go for the makeup by Mario, but if I could keep two, this would be the other one. The Milani Cheeky Kiss. This is in shade Hey Honey. This is beautiful. This is almost like a spot on dupe for the NARS. It's not quite as creamy, but it looks beautiful on the skin. The shade isn't exactly the same. It's pretty close. This is actually probably closer in shade to the Chanel than it is to the NARS, but as far as the way that it applies, it sits on the skin and the finish that it has, like they both have like a very powdery finish. I would say that the Milani is probably the closest that you're going to get, to my knowledge, at the drugstore for a um, dupe to the NARS. This is a beautiful formula. I really do love it. I've enjoyed it. I've used it a ton. I want to continue to use it more. I just have other bronzers that I'm testing out at the moment. But this is an absolutely beautiful drugstore option if you don't want to drop the coin that this one costs. This is fantastic. The e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. I never got the just regular putty bronzer. I just have the luminous one. And this is in the shade Summer Fridays. I do enjoy this. I do think it's a beautiful product. You can see I've got quite a dip in mine. Again, I don't like the pan size in this, so I have to use a smaller brush and kind of like really dig in there. But this is a pretty product. I do really enjoy this. I like this better than I like their blushes. The color is really pretty. Again, this one is close to the NARS, but the Milani is closer. So I enjoy this. It's not a favorite, but I do get a lot of use out of it. I will continue to use it. I just don't think it's anything that I would ever repurchase, but it's not anything that I would get rid of either. Let me show you. Now that I have all these on, look at the, the Fenty. That color, it's almost like bruisey green on me. I just, uh, I don't like the shade. It's, yeah, the shade of the Fenty just isn't good. Okay, my little stick bronzers right here. Let's start with the milk one because I love this. My issue is my component is broken, so it doesn't twist up anymore. So I have to take off the bottom and like poke up under there and push it up. So it's just, it's a mess, but it's such a beautiful product that I can't bring myself to get rid of it. I usually put it on like dip the brush on here and then put it on, but this is a beautiful product. It's a little bit more stiff than what I prefer but it's not bad. It's really not. I like the shade of it. It's really hard for me to find a shade that doesn't pull too orange, and this one does not pull too orange on me. It absolutely doesn't. It does pull a little bit darker than these shades here or even the um, Makeup by Mario, but it is beautiful. It just, it irritates me that I'm not even, I don't even think I used it that many times, and it just quit twisting up but and also the fact that they make them smaller now that's irritating too but it's nice it's not one that again I don't think I would repurchase it I do really like it but just with my experience with it it's not one that I would repurchase I will continue to use it until it just becomes too nasty and too big of a pain in the ass to twist it up and get the product out but um, not a favorite but it's not horrible either the Westman Atelier what is this called? The Face Trace Contour Stick. I have the shade Biscuit. I actually got this in an influencer very recently, and this 
this is beautiful like I really enjoy this oh I'm running out of room and I should have cleaned it off oh well this is gorgeous like this for me it has that rosy undertone to it and it blends out so easily and so seamlessly I really enjoy it now would I ever pay what this costs no I wouldn't because it's going to expire before I can use the whole thing and while it's nice and I enjoy it it's just not my favorite formula in the world but um, I am happy to have it. I am happy to use it. I like the component. It's weighty. It's heavy. It's pretty. It's luxe. I do like it. It's just, it's not a favorite for me, but it's not one that I would get rid of either. I just wouldn't ever purchase it or probably recommend it, I guess. Okay, let's talk about the Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is actually a stick foundation, but it's a contour shade, and I have the um, the shade Fawn. This one, I have used this so, so much. For the longest time, this was like the only one that I had. I love this. Like, I, I truly do love this. I would hands down repurchase this time and time again. I would recommend it. This is so creamy, so beautiful. I love the shade. I love how it blends out. Like, this as far as stick formulas go, this is my favorite. I really, really enjoy this. And this would probably be third in line for cream bronzers as far as keeps go. I love this. Like I said, I have used the crap out of it. I've had it for a while. It's still creamy. It doesn't smell. I've probably had this for a couple years, but we're not going to tell anybody that. But it's beautiful. I really do love it. It's one of the few ABH products that I actually do really enjoy. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of ABH overall. Like I've tried the foundation, didn't like it. Tried the concealer, didn't like it. Um, their eyeshadows are okay. Brow products are nice. This is a beautiful product. I have not tried like the pot one yet. I should probably try that and see how it compares to this stick because I, I love this. This is beautiful. And last but not least for creams, we have Miss Rare Beauty right here. This is a beautiful formula. I have the shade Happy Soul. I don't use this very much because this is very warm on my skin. I got this before she added new shades, so I like to ignore that. I have like a, like a scratch right there, and it's kind of scabbed up a little bit. But um, So it, that's not the product that's pulling. That's my skin. Um, but... So my, it's very warm on me and I can wear it better in the summer, but, um, I would, I would love to get the shade that's a little bit more on the neutral side than this. This is a fantastic product. It really is. This is so user friendly. This is beginner friendly. Like this is so incredibly creamy. This reminds me of, here it is, the NARS in a stick version. Like that's how creamy it is. Like if you were to take this and put it in a stick, I feel like these two play very nicely, like the same. It's absolutely beautiful. I like it. I just want a different shade is really what it is. So I need to get a different shade in the Fenty and the Rare Beauty, but I just have not done it yet because there's so many others that I want to try. Okay, so moving on to powder bronzers. These are all the powder bronzers that I have. Um, I also have a hard time finding a powder bronzer that I love because a lot of them pull so orange and I'm loving that we are getting shade ranges with bronzers. That makes me so, so happy. But let's go ahead and start with this one right here. I received this one in Influencer. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Bronzer. It is in the shade 001. This is a radiant loose bronzer. Let's see if I can open this without making a mess. Okay, here we go. This is gorgeous. It's messy, but it's gorgeous. A little bit goes a long way. This has such a beautiful tone to it. It's very sheer, very soft. Let me see if I can get enough without shaking it into the lid 
but it's beautiful it really is it's got just the prettiest sheen to it I like the tone I like the color a little bit goes a long way like I said and it's affordable at the drugstore like I was impressed I was a little weary about a loose bronzer but I really enjoy this I'm super impressed with how much I do it's not anything that I would ever travel with or anything like that but it is beautiful if you're looking for just a sheer glowy bronzer that doesn't pull too warm it doesn't pull too um, cool it's just a perfect neutral from the drugstore and you don't mind a loose bronzer like this is the first loose bronzer I've ever tried this is beautiful I like it I really really do the formula is fantastic Let's stick with drugstore. We have this little e.l.f. palette right here. This is the Pow Powder Bronzer Palette, and I did recently talk about this in a speed review that the formula is nice in here, yes, but the shade range is horrible. Like, this is the only one that they have, and there's one, not enough of a difference in the tone in here or even the depth to make it worth it. It's one of those that you get if you're like, out of town you forgot your bronzer and you just need something really quick that's what this is you have your deeper one you have your like more rosy tone your more neutral tone your more uh, orangey tone but as you can see all four of these work on my skin tone so it's not going to work on any other skin tone so while I enjoy the formula I just I hate that it's not very inclusive but Again, like I said, if you're on a budget, if you're in a pickle, this is a fantastic buy if the shades are going to work for you. Last one from the drugstore is the OG Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This is light bronzer. It's the original. This is the second one I've ever had. And this is beautiful. It's just, it's a good go-to bronzer. It's just a no-brainer. It has the fragrance to it, but it's beautiful. It works perfect on my skin. I like it better in the summer because it is a little bit more on the warm side, but it's not so warm that I can't pull it off but it's just it's not my perfect shade in the winter when I like things to be a little bit more on the like neutral and subdued side so beautiful formula absolutely love it it's a staple it's a classic I will probably always have one of these in my collection but it's fragranced I'm sure you know that but if you didn't these are heavily fragranced but they smell good if you like fragrance Okay, we're going to pop to this guy right here. This is my Marc Jacobs Omega Bronzer. This is in the shade 102 Tantric, and uh, I miss this so much. This is my favorite bronzer probably of all time. I've hit pan in it, and I absolutely love it. I've slowed down using it because I just, I don't want it to go away, and I know that's ridiculous. Like, I really do want to finish it, but I also want to hold on to it because Marc Jacobs is coming back next year, supposedly. That's what was announced, I believe, like the end of last year, is that Marc Jacobs Beauty is returning, and I loved Marc Jacobs Beauty. It was one of my favorite brands. This is the only thing I have left in my collection from the brand, but I want to compare and see if he's going to come back out with this bronzer because, one... This bronzer was so popular like everybody had this bronzer it was everywhere it was hyped it was huge i think this was like 55 dollars or something like that so that's actually not bad for how much product you get and this is beautiful it's my favorite it's like the pinnacle of bronzers for me i compare all of my bronzers to this it's my perfect color my perfect formula my perfect everything I will be so sad the day that this is gone, but like I said, I'm crossing my fingers that it comes back. Jaclyn Hill. This is um, the bronzer from Jaclyn Hill. This is in the shade Skinny Dip, and while I was never like a huge fan of the brand, I can't deny that this is a beautiful formula of the bronzer, and even though it's not a brand anymore, I will not be getting rid of it because I do love it. It is beautiful. Um, I'm not going to stay on this too long just because you can't get it, but the shade is very similar to the Marc Jacobs one, which is part of the reason I loved it, plus it smells like coffee, and now, of course, this is discontinued. But, um, yeah, beautiful product. If you have it, hang on to it, use it. If you don't, I'm sorry because you can't get it. 
my melt bronzer. I was so excited about this. I had wanted this bronzer for a really long time and I finally picked it up during the Black Friday sale because it was like $7. This is the lightest shade and this is so dark on me. Like it is super pigmented. Um, I can make it work. I just have to go in with a really, really, really light hand because it is dark. But um, as far as the formula goes, it is a beautiful formula. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. It's pigmented, a little bit goes a long way, but I don't have any issues with it patching or grabbing or anything like that. But like I said, this is the lightest shade. So if you are like my shade or even lighter, this probably won't work for you. Like it might if you're like, if you're willing, like if you really, really, really want to make it work, it will work, but it's a lot of effort. It's probably one that I would at the end of the year probably declutter give it to a friend who could actually pull this off but it makes me sad because I love melt I just I wish the bronzer was just a little bit lighter MAC Cosmetics I have the matte light rosy skin finish bronzer and I got this one when it came out I did break mine it popped out of the thing I tried to push it back in and doing so I cracked it but this is beautiful. I love this bronzer. I love that cooler rosy undertone to it. It goes so good on my skin. It's light. It's not crazy pigmented. It goes on beautifully. It's buildable. I do have to put on a little bit more than I would anything else, but I'm actually okay with that. Being fair skinned, I'm okay with a bronzer that's not super pigmented right off the gate because it means I can go in a little more heavy handed, which I tend to do anyway, but this is beautiful. I would love to try the, um, the glowy version of this, but yeah, it's beautiful. The Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector in Light Medium. This is an interesting product. Um, I keep this with my bronzers because that's how I use it. If I can open it, y'all. Okay. But um, it's interesting because it's, I mean, it's like three products in one. So you can either like stick over here and just have like a powder bronzer or you can mix the three together and have a glowy bronzer. Um, I bought it to use it the way that he intends you to use it, which is putting on the cream version, the skin enhancer, and then setting it with the skin perfector. And it does look beautiful when you do that. It absolutely does. That's a lot of work. I don't want to have to think about that, but on its own, it is beautiful. I usually tend to stick to this side right here, and then every now and then I'll kind of swirl in over there a little bit and get a little bit of that sheen. It's not too much of a sheen. It's not anything that's like blinding, like it looks a little scary in the pan, but it's not. Um, it's not my favorite by any means. It is beautiful. It's not one that I would repurchase. It's not one that I reach for a whole lot. I enjoy the cream version a lot more than I do this one. REM Beauty. This is new. This was a new launch this year. This is the Satin Matte Bronzer in Send to Voicemail. And this one, the formula is nice, but this is a little almost yellowy on my skin. It's weird because it doesn't look yellowy in the pan, but when I put it on, it's just not the most flattering shade on my skin. It's very strange. I don't even know like see how that just pulls like a weird like almost like a peachy color I don't know it's not the most flattering on my skin so I don't really reach for it much I do enjoy the formula I would love to pick up another shade and see if that works better for me but yeah I'm just not a fan of the shade but I do really enjoy the formula I think it's beautiful I think she knocked it out of the park with that but the shade's just not for me Okay, so we are down to these guys right here, and I can tell you all of these are favorites. I love every single one of these. Um, I will tell you which one is my absolute favorite, but I do enjoy every single one of these. But let's go ahead and start with the Pat McGrath Labs right here. I have the shade uh, Bronze Dawn. I had originally ordered the lightest one that she had, and it was like 
way too light but this is a beautiful beautiful formula i absolutely love it i love the tone on my skin it's buildable it blends out nicely it's not too pigmented but it's also not like as softly pigmented as some others it's beautiful i really enjoy it and i like that it's got a little bit of like a neutrally undertone it's not nearly as orange as this but it's also not as rosy as the mac either this is beautiful i'm so glad that she came out with these because i love this one the house labs bronzer this was a favorite of mine for the longest time i have light level two and you can see i have used this to death like you can't even see the h anymore i'm probably close to pan but this is beautiful like i don't even know how to describe it because it almost feels like a cream when you put your finger in there but it's a powder it's just so velvety smooth like the texture in this is unlike anything else i have ever used it seriously feels like a velvety creamy bronzer it's stunning this formula is absolutely beautiful she did such a good job with this i love it it is one of my favorites it's probably top three if i had to pick three bronzers out of all this so this would probably be number three and then we'll get to number two and one in just a minute okay this is the nabla skin bronzing and ambra this is a beautiful bronzer as well it definitely has a sheen to it i love this one in the summer it's a baked formula so it just goes on absolutely beautiful i love the shade of this one i love the sheen that it has it just again i like to wear more of a sheen bronzer in the summer it just it makes me feel like summer i like to bronze it up a little bit more but this is beautiful the hype is real with these i do love it it's a favorite of mine for sure all of these really are. I don't really have too many bronzers that I don't like because usually whenever I find one that I don't like, I get rid of it. I don't usually hold on to them because I usually don't like them because they're too orange or they're too warm but um, or too dark. I'm sorry, but this one's beautiful. I do really enjoy it. The Victoria Beckham, what is this called? The Matte Bronzing Brick. I have shade 02. This thing, y'all, you could take somebody out with this. Like, this is weighty. This is probably the heaviest product I own. But this is beautiful. This is an absolutely stunning product. I wish that it was separated, but it is what it is. You can pop it out and remove it and just order a replacement for it, but this is beautiful. I like mixing the two together, but I will go ahead and show you what they look like separate. I love this. I don't know if it's necessarily like worth the price tag, honestly. I got it more out of curiosity. I wanted to know. So many people were talking about how beautiful it is, and it is a beautiful product. It's not a favorite, but I do really enjoy it. I do really love it. I actually, um, Khaki Review says that she uses this lighter side to kind of fill in the transition between her, like, blush and her, um, her concealer so it's not such a stark contrast and this does this works absolutely beautiful that you just use the lighter shade and it's stunning but this is beautiful it is a nice formula I don't know if it's exactly worth it but um, it probably won't ever go anywhere either and then there were four let's talk Jones Road for a minute because this one looks more like a blush and it's interesting because I mean that looks exactly like blush but it's beautiful. I love this. This is actually stunning on the cheeks in the summer or even like in the fall just because for me it gives like this really pretty almost like sunburnt bronze effect to it but it's beautiful. My only issue is it's very very powdery and I feel like the pan is very shallow like I can already see the pan and I feel like I'm going to hit pan and that's kind of disappointing because I mean this isn't cheap it's not like crazy expensive it's not like Tom Ford or Gucci but it's also not like physician's formula like it's pricey so that's the only thing that bothers me but I do really enjoy it I like the formula I like the color it's the only bronzer I have in my collection that's this color so it's very unique and I do really enjoy it 
the Gucci bronzer. This was the limited edition um, holiday packaging. I did get this at the last Sephora sale because I need to know. And this is a beautiful bronzer. Like I absolutely will give it that. It is stunning. The formula is beautiful. I like the shade. The shade is probably the closest that I have. This shade is probably the closest that I have for the Jones Road. It is a little bit more of that pinky undertone. It goes on beautifully. It just it's creamy, it's smooth, it doesn't patch, it doesn't skip, it doesn't lift, it lasts all day. It is a beautiful formula. I do really enjoy it. The packaging, of course, is stunning. It has this little brush underneath it, which I don't need it, but how cute is it? It will stay. So I do enjoy this. It's just not a favorite. I know, I know so many people love it, and I do love it, but it's just not a top three. This might make four or five. It gets definitely up there. It's just not like the one. All right, Fenty and Tom Ford. So these are probably my two favorites in my collection that you can still get because Mark Jacobs, Mark Jacobs is still my favorite, but you can't get it anymore. So there's no point in calling it my favorite. But these two are beautiful. So my number two would have to be Fenty Beauty and my favorite would have to be Tom Ford. So this is... The Sun Stalker Bronzer and in Into Sun, and it's beautiful. Like, I've used this one so, so much. I love the tone. It's light. It's buildable. It's just, it's perfect for that day where you want to add some color to the skin, but you're not looking to add a ton of warmth to the skin. Like, just a little bit, just so you don't look so washed out. This is a beautiful formula. I really do love it. It's creamy, it's soft, it's velvety. It is everything that you would want in a bronzer. I really, really love this. I enjoy it. I highly recommend this one. But my absolute favorite has to go to Tom Ford. And I hate that so, so much. I hate how much I love this bronzer. I was hoping I would get it and hate it and could return it. And I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. It's beautiful. And this is the shade 02 Terra. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful formula. I love the shade. It doesn't feel very good. Like, honestly, when you feel it, it doesn't feel very soft. It doesn't feel very creamy. But it's the way that it applies to the skin with a brush. It just melts into the skin. It just, it's seamless. It has a tiny bit of sheen to it. The shade is perfect for me. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what Tom Ford puts in this. I don't know if it's like... I don't know, liquid gold or what he does, but it's gorgeous. I hate that I love it, but I do, and I would absolutely 100% repurchase this. I just wish that for the price tag, because I think this is like $70, maybe $75, like it's, oh, y'all, it's wildly expensive. Like I'm almost ashamed to admit that I even purchased it, but I had to know, and I just wish it was bigger. I wish the pan size was bigger because if you compare this to the Marc Jacobs, which I believe was 55, which would probably be close to this price now, like that's the tiniest little pan and it's not super deep either, but it is what it is. You can't put a price tag on love and I do truly love this bronzer. If you're curious about it, if you want to spend the money on it, if you want to have a luxury formula that performs and looks beautiful, this is going to be your girl right here. I would never in a million years tell you to go out and purchase a Tom Ford bronzer, but if you've been curious about it and you want to know, in my opinion, for me, it is worth every single penny. Up next we have highlighters. So I have a larger collection of highlighters. I actually think I have more than I probably thought I did, but um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think that there's any highlighter in here that I don't like. I really do enjoy all of them. Liquids aren't my favorite, but other than that, um, I don't think there's one highlighter in here that I don't like, but let's go ahead and start with liquids and then we will go on to powders and then we will do palettes. Okay, so these are my liquids and one cream bronzer right here. Um, let's just go ahead and jump in. So let's start with the 
e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Highlighting Wand. I have the shade Champagne Campaign, and this is nice. I do enjoy it. I like the shade. I like the consistency. It's nice and beaming. The only thing that I don't like is the fact that this does not lock because it can get rather messy, but it is beautiful. I do really enjoy it. I might need to bust out different lighting in order to get like the true payoff, but um, this is beautiful. These are a really good buy from the drugstore. Up next, we have this one from Fenty Beauty. This did come with two of them, but I gave the other one to a friend because it was just way too dark for my skin. But this is in Hustla Baby 2.0, and this is a really pretty... Um, highlighter it's a really pretty formula the only thing I don't like is that the applicator there's just it can get really messy like just too much comes out and that can be an issue but what I like to do generally with a liquid bronzer is make it mix it in with a liquid blush so I can have more of a glowy blush but this one is very very pretty it does sit well on my skin especially if I blend it out I also enjoy putting liquid bronzers on with a brush as well. I don't like doing it with a beauty blender, so there's that as well. But this is a beautiful formula. I do really like it. It's not exactly like the smoothest of formulas, but it is really pretty. It's very reflective. I do enjoy it. Let's go ahead and talk about this one from LYS. This one is... Um, <laughs> pretty low actually. This is the Aim High Multi-Use Liquid Highlighter in the shade Brave and this is beautiful. I really, really enjoy this. I've had this for a while. Again, this is one of those that my favorite thing to do is to mix it in with a blush, but this one, I like the undertone of this one better than I do the Fenty, but it's beautiful. It's creamier. It's a little bit softer. It's um, got like a more finely milled formula to it. It's beautiful. I really, really enjoy this. And this bottle is like huge for what you get. I think this was actually the first product I ever tried from LYS and this is beautiful. I have these two from Rare Beauty. These came with the little mini blushes that I have in the holiday set, but we have Magnetize and Transcend, and these are beautiful. I do enjoy this formula as well. Magnetize is beautiful, and I love that these have the doe foot applicator. Like That makes me so happy. It's easier to put on. It's my preferred way with a liquid of any kind, but that one's beautiful. The color Transcend is almost a little too dark for me, so I really like to mix this one in with um, my deeper liquid blushes. It just it goes perfectly because on its own, it's just too dark for my skin. This one blends out pretty nicely, and I can get away with it, but this one, there's just absolutely no way. But I love the formula. They're shiny, they're shifty, they're beautiful. I absolutely love them and these are nice and sm um, smooth when you apply them as well. But my favorite liquid highlighters are these two right here. These are the Melt Sex Foils. These are beautiful. One, this is like the biggest bottle ever. Like you will never use all of this. I love that it's a pump and I love the shades. So this is the shade Fetish and it's beautiful. I absolutely love love this color and these are just so beautiful they melt into the skin it has more of a sheer base they are shifty they're reflective there we go there's a little bit of that reflection like absolutely beautiful this one is probably my favorite one out of the two but then I also have the shade stargazer this one is also beautiful it's more of like a peachy color but stunning and I do appreciate that if it's not going to have a doe foot it's got a pump so it makes it easier to apply but look at that shade like oh, just so beautiful these are stunning just the littlest bit goes a long way and this is one of the few products that I will actually apply with a finger because it just looks beautiful if you just tap it along the cheek right on the high points it's stunning this is a beautiful formula for Melt. 
And then lastly in this little section is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. And I think this is like the only shade. This is Pearlescent Glow. I got this because Angelica Nikvist ranted and raved about how beautiful of a highlighter this is. And this is. This is gorgeous. Let me dry off my arm. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous formula. A little bit goes away, goes a long way. And it just has like this really pretty, like ethereal lit from within glow to it. It's not like super over the top. I'm trying to figure out my lighting for this, y'all. This one is a little bit more on the complicated side than like blushes and bronzers. But, um,. Yeah, it does have a beautiful like lit from within glow. It's not going to be a beaming highlight. So I really enjoy this for like more of a no makeup makeup day, even like an inner corner highlight. This is beautiful. It looks beautiful under the brow bone, on the nose, Cupid's bow, all of the places that I still highlight. But this is a really nice formula. I do really enjoy it. Okay, so these are my powder highlights. I think I got all of them in frame, but this is what I have. This is my collection. Let's go ahead and start back up here with Makeup Revolution. This is a newer one in my collection. This is beautiful. This is the what is this called? Silk Touch Highlighter in the shade Road Rose Luster and this is beautiful. This is so shiny, so reflective so beaming without being like um glittery it's very smooth it looks beautiful on the skin i really enjoy this i'm impressed i picked this up with the makeup revolution silk touch foundation or whatever and this is beautiful like if you want a beaming highlight at a drugstore price this one's nice Glam Light X Ghost Faced. This is the only highlighter I have from Glam Light, and I did pick this up whenever I picked up the rest of the Halloween releases. This is beautiful. I really enjoy this highlight. So these are a little bit more on like the glittery side, but they're not like chunky where they're gonna have fallout or anything. But like, um, this one especially is a little bit more on like that glittery side, but they are gorgeous. They just have the most beautiful shift to them. It's these two right here, not this one, and they are just beautiful. This up here has such a beautiful reflect to it. I really, really enjoy them. While they're not the smoothest thing in the world, they look beautiful on the skin and I don't have any issues with them. Benefit cookie highlighter like this is this is old. This is one of the chunkier Boxes, but this is beautiful. This is like such a stunning highlight. It's smooth. It's silky It's so soft and it looks Absolutely beautiful on the cheek. It's beaming I just had to be careful because if I overdo it you can see it when you look straight ahead because it doesn't have a transparent base, but it's beautiful. It's beaming. It's I mean, it's an OG. It's highly rated for a reason. It's gone viral. It's she's beautiful. Like she'll always be here. The only Kaleidos highlighter that I have, I got Star Surfer. I just picked one because I wanted to try the formula and then just never ordered more. But this is beautiful. This is definitely on like the more glittery and chunky side, but it is stunning. It has like the most beautiful pink shift to it. It's not like a super chunky highlighter by any means, but it definitely has like a little bit more of like particle fallout. You can see it in the container, but it's beautiful. It's one of my favorites. I just love how reflective and shiny it is. I love a pink highlighter too. Like those are some of my favorites, but these are beautiful. Let's hit on all of my ColourPop highlighters because I have six of them. So let's go ahead and start with the Super Shocks over here. This is Felicity and this is beautiful. Like you can see in the pan, it's like a pink gold beautiful highlight and 
I really do enjoy the Super Shock. It's not my favorite formula in the world, but it is beautiful. It's shiny. It's reflective. It's affordable, which we absolutely love affordable. And as long as you keep the lids closed, like really tight on these, they don't dry out. So just make sure that when you close it, like you close it really good. And then, of course, we have Flexitarian, the OG, the staple in anybody's collection. This is beautiful. This is so creamy. This is actually much creamier than Felicity, but it's beautiful. Like, look at that shine. I love it. I love a beaming highlight. I used to have... I think it was lunch money I think that was the one that I completely finished and I loved that one as well but I never repurchased it because obviously I don't need to but absolutely gorgeous love 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 it but I think Felicity is probably my favorite and then lastly from the Winnie the Pooh collection we have 100 acre wood and this is like a true gold highlighter and this is stunning it's too dark for me but I love to wear this on my lid and if I do my makeup just right I can pull it off on the cheek it is beautiful it is reflective it's not quite as like beaming as the other two but it's still a beautiful highlight and I absolutely love it because it's one of the very few like actual gold highlights that I have in my collection and then I have these three right here. These are from the Harry Potter collection and I love them. I didn't really care what color they were. I love Harry Potter. It's one of my favorite franchises. I love the books. I'm, I'm a huge reader, but I love the books. I love the movies. We've done the whole universal thing with um, going to Diagon Alley and all of that and it was just so much fun. But first we have Dobby and this one is so pretty. It's a little too dark for me, but it's still absolutely beautiful nonetheless, and I can pull it off. I just have to be really careful. This one is more on the gold side, but it's more like a bronzy gold. It's not like a true gold, but it's absolutely beautiful. And these are super shocks that are pressed into here. And then we have Buckbeak, which is, oh, this one's so pretty. This one is beautiful as well. I really, really love this one. This one is more of like a pewter shade almost. Like it's not quite a silver and it's not quite like, like a gray. It's almost a pewter. It's absolutely beautiful. Like this one is very unique in my collection as well. I don't have a lot of shades this color and I can wear this one no problem. But my favorite one of the three is Hedwig. Of course it is. We all love Hedwig. This is gorgeous. This is like a lavender highlight and it's just oh, so, so pretty and icy and reflective and just so fun and beautiful. I love it. These are favorites. I really do enjoy them. I think even if they were to dry out, I would still keep them just as like collector's type things. But I love the way that they look in the pan. I like that they're in these cute little compacts as well and they're magnetic so they like stick to each other they stick to other things but these are pretty I like them I do enjoy the ColourPop um, Super Shock formula it's not a favorite formula but it is a beautiful formula let's talk super reflective shifty gorgeous multi-chrome highlighters so I have three from Odin's Eye the first one is Pink Star and look at this like it looks like green but it has the most beautiful shift to it like can you see that on the camera like ugh, it's like a green to pink to like silver shift it's absolutely beautiful these are stunning they're not super glittery or chunky they're very smooth very shifty like same color it looks green in the pan but then it looks pink on my hand I love these. I love a good colorful highlighter. And then we have Rose Sky. Where's the opening? Here it is. <laughs> and Rose Sky is like a pink to a purple. This one's very pretty. This is probably the most wearable and like softest. When I say wearable, I mean for like the everyday person. Like if you were going to wear one of these to work, this would probably be the most wearable because it doesn't have like a super strong shift it just looks like a really pretty pink highlight on the cheek but when the light hits it just right it just has this beautiful like 
purple silver flip to it and it's stunning. And then lastly we have Azora Shine. This one is fun too. Like this one is so so fun because it's like a white base with like blue reflex in it and it just you can see that on camera look at how that picks up it's oh that is like I don't even have words that's like breathtaking that is my favorite one of the three and I adore it these are so good I wish I had picked all of them up like they are some of my absolute favorite highlighters in my collection and these will never go anywhere they're beautiful I would be heartbreaking if these shattered okay I have two highlighters from Ofra. I have Rodeo Drive, and then I have the one that was in collaboration with Samantha March. This is Dream Chaser. So let's go ahead and start with Rodeo Drive. I feel like this is the OG. This was like the popular one, and this one's beautiful, but it's almost like too dark for me. It is beautiful, and I can wear it. It's just, it's not my favorite, honestly. As much as I love it, it's not my favorite shade. I do really enjoy the Ofra highlighters. They are beautiful. Like the formula is definitely amazing, but the shade is just not my favorite. Dream Chaser, however, is stunning. It's pink, it's beautiful, I love it. I absolutely love this shade. Like this is a go-to of mine as well. It's one that I always come back to and pull out and just I adore it. It's beautiful. I love a pink highlighter and it's beaming. What more can I say? Okay, so I have one from House Labs. This is in the shade Pink Amethyst. And again, this is like a really unique formula. This is a little bit more on like, like the glittery side, but look at that highlighter. Like it's not super beaming, but it does have a beautiful flip to it. Like it looks very like peachy in the pan, but then it has this gorgeous like pink flip to it. It's stunning. I do really enjoy this. It's not my favorite product from House Labs. I'll be honest. I like the blushes and the liners and the bronzers a whole lot better. I even like the foundation and the concealer better than this, but it is a beautiful highlight and I do enjoy it. I do use it. Again, it's just not an absolute favorite formula. Oh, Becca, 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 Becca. This is actually a Becca Smashbox, but this is Champagne Pop. Hello. And this is beautiful. I had one of the mini ones and I finished it. So I um, repurchased this after Becca went out of business and Smashbox bought them out. Well, not bought them out, but bought out some of their products. And this is just an OG highlighter. Like, it's been around forever. It's beautiful. It's popular for a reason. It's hyped for a reason. And it really makes me like miss Becca. I loved Becca. I loved their primers. I loved their highlighters. Um, they had a powder that I absolutely loved. I think it was called the Hydra Mist Setting Powder or something like that. And it was absolutely gorgeous. It felt like water going on the skin. But anyways, this is a beautiful highlight. I absolutely love it. I will never get rid of it. I will use it and use it and use it forever. Up next from REM Beauty, we have Miss Mercury. This is a newer one in my collection. I purchased this one when she came out with her bronzer and her blush. And this is a beautiful highlighter. Like this really is. I feel like this is slept on because this is gorgeous. It's so soft, so smooth. And look at that reflection. Like it's gorgeous. Why aren't people talking about these more? I will never know. And these come in some absolutely beautiful colors. They come in like mint green, pink, lavender gorgeous I would love to pick up more of these but this is a beautiful formula and I really enjoy this one as well okay let's go to the Fenty Diamond Balm Ugh, this is a favorite of mine this is in how many carats and I love this it is just sparkle goodness all over the cheek it is a clear base but it just has like this absolutely beautiful like sparkle to it. That's all I can say. It doesn't look like anything. It looks like just pure shimmer floating on your cheek, but it's not like 
glittery, it's not chunky, it is smooth, it is soft, and it just gives the most beautiful look. I love to wear this either by itself or I will kind of take it and pat it over like a matte eye look or if I want to give just a little bit more sparkle to my cheek, I'll pack, uh, pat it over my cheek as well. This is beautiful. This is an absolute favorite of mine and I will always have one in my collection. Okay, Miss Jaclyn Hill. This is the only one I have and this is the shade Iced. This is beautiful. I will give it to Miss Jacqueline. She knew what she was doing when it came to bronzers and highlights, which are we surprised, but this is gorgeous. This is a beautiful highlight. Like, look at how reflective and smooth that is. I wish you could feel this because it's just absolutely smooth and silky, but it's beautiful. Things like this are what makes me sad whenever a brand goes out of business because it's like, you know, aside from... The, the drama that she had aside from all of that she did have some absolutely beautiful products like you have to give her that she really did she had an eye for makeup she knew what she was doing it was just a shame that she got caught up in what she got caught up in and who knows maybe she's learned her lesson and we will see more from her in the future but this is beautiful I do love it and yeah I will keep it forever and ever ABH. This is a newer one as well. This one actually came out recently. This is the Glow Seeker Highlighter in Sun Idol and this is hefty but it looks like a little macaroon. I think it's cute but this is hefty packaging and it's beautiful. This was supposed to be like a return of the Omrezy highlighter that I never got and I'm still sad to this day because I wanted that highlighter so bad and I just I couldn't afford it at the time and so I never did I had other priorities but this is beautiful I don't know how similar it is to Omrezy but I don't I don't really care if it's not it's beautiful I love it it fills that void for me and it is a really stunning highlight I will give it that like regardless of everything this is a beautiful product Iconic London. This is another newer one in my collection and another newer one that hit the market. This is the Lit and Luminous Baked Highlighter. And I'll say this came out of left field. Like I have tried things from Iconic London before and I haven't been impressed. But this caught my eye and it is stunning. It's not nearly as impressive on the hand as it is on the cheek. It just, it is beaming on the cheek. Like when the, when the light hits your cheek and you have this on, it's like you can be seen from outer space. This is beautiful. I am really impressed. It really makes me want to try more from Iconic London. And yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. This is the Bobbi Brown Highlighting Powder powder in Pink Glow. And this, this is beautiful. Like, not only is the pan absolutely beautiful, like the packaging is a little plain. It's not very heavy in looks, but it looks beautiful. But then whenever you swirl it together, it's so soft, so silky, and just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It is so smooth and seamless. It melts into the skin. These are beautiful. I highly recommend it. I do think it's worth every penny. I do really enjoy it. I know they make mini versions of this, but um, I think I got this for free. She was doing around the holidays like a spend so much and get like three products for free and this was one of the ones that I picked and I'm so excited because I have been eyeballing this for years and I wish I had pulled the trigger sooner because it's absolutely stunning. This one from MAC, this was with their holiday release. This is in the shade Gleamscape. This is the extra dimension skin finish. This is so pretty. First of all, look at the embossing in the pan. That is beautiful, but this is like a pink to gold shift and it is gorgeous. It's a little bit on the chunkier side, but it looks beautiful. I love that pink reflect. I, like I said, I love a highlighter that has a pink shift to it. This is beautiful. I love it. Not only is the embossing beautiful and the packaging is beautiful, but the product inside is beautiful as well. This is the first time I've ever had a highlighter from MAC, and I have to say, like their highlighters are way better than their blushes. 
we're down to our last two single highlighters. Let's go ahead and talk about the Maybelline Master Chrome because this is gorgeous. From the drugstore, this is a beautiful highlighter. Like I have used this so much. It is so soft, so buttery. And look at that highlight. Like, are you kidding me? And these are like, what, 10 bucks maybe? Maybe 12 now, something like that. But still, I mean, you can't beat that price. These are absolutely beautiful. This isn't quite as like shiny and reflective as the Makeup Revolution, but it still gives you just a gorgeous beam. You get a great big huge pan. I love these. I think it comes in two other shades as well, but this is stunning. And last but not least, we have Miss Rare Beauty right here in Enlighten, and this is a favorite of mine. I love this highlighter. It is gorgeous, it is soft, it is smooth, and it is absolutely beaming. These are, <laughs> these are not for the faint of heart. Like, this is one of those that you can go in, and next thing you know, you've got, like, the most reflective cheek, almost like you put tin foil on your cheek. It's gorgeous and I love it. I love the price point, I love the packaging, I love I love everything about Rare Beauty. I love what the brand stands for and this is a favorite of mine for sure. She always stays on my desk. I've used her a lot, she's in a lot of my videos. This is a favorite. Okay, lastly we are here to highlighting palettes. So. I have quite a few, most of them for, are from Unearthly, but it is one of my favorite brands. It's one of my favorite highlighter formulas, but let's go ahead and jump into this. So let's go ahead and start with this little Dior palette right here. I have um, O2 Glitz. This is beautiful, I love this. I can use every single shade in here. These are just such a beautiful formula. They are not the most reflective thing in the world, like they're a little bit more of that lit from within, but it's still a beautiful formula. Like I understand the hype of these, it is real, and all four of these are wearable for me. They all look beautiful on the cheek. They look a little similar on camera, but I assure you it is four different colors. You have more of like a like a yellow gold. You have a pink, a peach, and a bronze, and this is gorgeous. I love, love, love this palette. For me, it's worth every single penny. Martine Cosmetics Shark Zone Highlighter Trio. This came out with the May Day collection that came out at um, Halloween. I picked this up when I picked up her palette and a couple of eyeliners, and this is beautiful. I really enjoy this. Like I was blown away by how much I like this, but this shade K right here is a blue highlighter, and I don't have a whole lot of blue highlighters in my collection, but it's gorgeous. It almost looks silver on the cheek, and then it just has this gorgeous like blue reflect to it. And then there's the shade Sydney, which is also beautiful. It's very icy, almost topper-esque. It's got more of a clear base to it. And then Meg, of course, we have to have good old Meg. This is beautiful. It's like a peachy gold highlighter. These are so smooth, so beautiful, very reflective. I'm really impressed with the Martine Cosmetics formula. I just, I really am. It makes me want to try so much more from the brand. The Blend Bunny Noctilucent Palette. Now this is gorgeous. This is absolutely beautiful. This has all of the colorful highlighters you could possibly want in it, but this is a very like glittery formula. So if you don't like like a glittery cheek, this is not going to be for you. But let's go ahead and swatch these. These are also a little bit more on the chunkier side as well, and you will see that as I swatch them, but just, oh, look at those highlights. Like, look at that. It's gorgeous. They're beaming, absolutely beautiful. This is the only one that's not super wearable for me, but um, it looks beautiful as a cheek topper or even like an inner corner highlight for the lid. Stunningly beautiful. Like this palette, oh, y'all, this palette is gorgeous. I love it just oh, it just gets better and better every time you swatch it and we still have two more i love this i believe this is still available on her website as 
as well. It is like a permanent addition. And then let's do the last one right there. Oh, Y'all, heaven right there. Heaven in a palette. This is gorgeous. I love it. It's a favorite of mine for sure. Stunning. Like, it's breathtakingly beautiful. I just look at how shiny and reflective those are. Gorgeous. Okay, this is the Frosting Highlighter Palette from Cosmic Beauty, formerly Cosmic Brushes. This came out with their summer launch. What was the name of that palette? I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but it's like the really bright, colorful one. And this came out with it, and this is so fun. This is beautiful. This is a fantastic formula. Again, it's shiny. It's reflective. It is so smooth. Like absolutely beautiful but the shades in here are just like breathtaking like um, indie brands they do it when it comes to eyeshadows and highlighters indie brands are always going to just blow your socks off they do every single time but they're also not for everybody because they are usually colorful highlighters and I know a lot of people either don't like colorful highlighters or they can't get away with wearing colorful highlighters but if you want a beautiful beaming colorful highlighter indie brands are where it's at and this palette is stunning and that brings us to my unearthly highlighter palettes now I love these. I adore these. These are absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and start here with Dreamer. This is um, the newest one from the brand. This one came out with the holiday box. I don't think it was a mystery box. I think it was just like a holiday collection box. And this is probably ha this probably has your most like everyday wearable shades in it, but it is still absolutely beautiful and reflective. So let's go ahead and swatch these so you can see them. All right, so we've got Wish, we've got Solace, and we've got Days. Absolutely beautiful. It's getting hard to see because I have so much like residual, like glitter shininess from all the other ones, but these are gorgeous. These are stunning, and these to me are very like everyday wearable. I feel like these are highlighters that you could get away with if you work in like an office setting and you have to have like a little bit more toned down discreet makeup. These are beautiful because they're reflective, they're shiny, but they're not like the beaming in your face highlighter that we're so used to, but I love these. I appreciate that we got something a little more subdued, something a little more laid back, and this is a gorgeous palette. The Spaced Out Highlighter Duo. I believe this is the one that came with the small summer mystery box, and then this one came with the large summer mystery box. I think that's right. But this one is so pretty. This is pink. This is, this is a lot. It's a lot of pink, but it's beautiful. I really do enjoy this. So you have more of your just like pink highlighter, just beautiful, pink, reflective, absolutely gorgeous but then this one this is where it gets fun like look at that so reflective so beautiful these look so intimidating in the pan and her highlighters usually do but once you put them on the colors are just stunning and they melt into the skin they're beautiful they're reflective they're not like chunky and glittery glittery they're just an absolutely beautiful formula and i love them The Get Groovy palette. This one is one of my favorites. I really enjoy this one. Like I said, this one I believe was the large summer, summer mystery box, but these are gorgeous as well. Again, they look a little intimidating in the pan because you have like the orange with the green and then the orange and the gold, but you put these on and they are beautiful. So let me show you. And I can actually get away with both of these as well because she tends to do more of a transparent base with her highlighters. And I appreciate that because it makes it wearable for more skin tones across the board. These are beautiful. I love it, love it, love it so, so much. And then lastly, we have the Resurgence Highlighter Duo in collaboration with Heather Austin. And this is 
gorgeous. I really enjoyed her collection that she did with Unearthly, and I'm so glad that she did it, but these are beautiful. These are like her low light formula. I've never tried it before, but um, according to Heather Austin, this is her low light formula, which I've heard is absolutely fantastic. But both of these shades are wearable for me because they have a transparent base and I have worn both of them on my cheeks and they do both work. So we have Renewal and we have Rebirth. And look at how beautiful those are. Absolutely stunning, reflective, beautiful, not chunky. I just love them. One of my favorites for sure. And last but not least, we have face palettes. So I don't have a whole lot of face palettes. Um, I don't usually gravitate towards them a whole, whole lot, but every now and then one comes out that just speaks to me. So let's go ahead and start with this one right here that is sitting on top. This is the Hourglass, um, what are these called? The Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palette. This is the one that came out for the holidays last year. This is the Jellyfish Palette in the Owl packaging. I just love the Owl so much. And this is gorgeous. I love it. I absolutely love the Hourglass um, finishing powders. I actually have the Ambient Lighting Trio palette that's in with my powders, and I have been through two of those. I love it, but this is beautiful. I really, really enjoy this. Um, the bronzer in here is not my favorite. It is a little bit on the warm side, but I can pull it off. It's just not, it's not my perfect bronzer. The blushes in here are actually really, really beautiful. Compared to the little single that I have, these have more of a color payoff than that one does. You can't really see that one on camera because it's so super light, but they do have way more of a color payoff than that one, so that makes me really happy. And then we have the two setting powders here. I'm not gonna swatch those because you won't be able to see them. And then we have the highlighter, which is actually pretty beaming and beautiful for um, an hourglass highlighter. It's the only one that I've ever tried and I love it. I really enjoy this little palette right here. I've gotten a lot of use out of it and I don't regret it at all. I think it's a great value for what you get and I love it. Let's talk about Miss Charlotte Tilbury. So this is the Glowgasm Face Palette. I got this a couple of months ago when she re-released it, and I have to say this is disappointing. Like, this is really disappointing. I was excited about it. I have always wanted one of her little face palettes, and this just isn't, it's not as impressive as what I thought it was gonna be. Like, the bronzer is again not my perfect shade and it's extremely light like you really have to build it up to get it to do anything this is so shimmery that it is like a blush topper like it is super 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 shimmery like this is not a blush i thought this was going to be more on the blush side of things the highlighters in here however are gorgeous i do really love the highlighters i don't know how well that's going to pick up on camera, but I will give it that. It's just, I don't know, for the price tag on it and what you think you're getting versus what you actually get, I don't think this little guy is worth it. It is a disappointment. I will continue to use it and show it love because I did pay for it. It was not cheap, but honestly, I probably should have returned it, but I didn't, so here we are. Pretty packaging though. If you want a pretty face palette, this one is gorgeous. This is the Bobbi Brown, um, what's it called? Luxe Cheek and Highlight Palette. This one came out at the holidays and this is, this is gorgeous. This is a face palette done right. I absolutely love this. Let me wipe off my arm because I'm out of room. But this is beautiful. This is like, like a baked delay formula and it just performs so beautifully. I don't have any issues. It builds up beautifully. This bronzer is gorgeous. These are so soft, so smooth. The highlighter is so reflective, and I love the blush that this comes with as well. Um, it's the only face palette I've ever used from Bobbi Brown, so I don't know if they're all like this, if it's one of those where she 
releases one every year and they're just beautiful but it's gorgeous that highlighter I know it looks very very dark but when you put it on with a brush and just sheer it out it does look absolutely beautiful on the cheek the bronzer looks a little orange as well but again once you put it on with a brush and sheer it out it's not as orangey as it looks on camera this is beautiful I love this I would recommend this over this all day the Smashbox Halo Sculpt and Glow Face Palette in Pink Saturation. Um, this was another disappointment. The highlighter is beautiful, the blushes are beautiful, the bronzer sucks. So let's go ahead and swatch these out. I did just have this in a speed reviews not too long ago, so I'm not going to stay here too long. Oh, that's the other thing. This doesn't stay open. That drives me nuts. But the blush is beautiful. That's the pink one. That's the peachy one. And then you have the highlight, which is gorgeous. The highlight, which one is this? This is the Rose Quartz Highlighter, so it's absolutely beautiful. But then you get over to the bronzer, and it's just like it almost looks hard panned but it's not but it just like I am digging my finger in here and like where did that go like there's hardly anything here and it doesn't build up very well either so if the bronzer had been good this would be like the perfect little face palette but it's not so I can't recommend it based off of the fact that you only get three usable products out of this. I did state in my um, review over this that I don't know if it's just this palette in particular or if it's all of them that the bronzer is underwhelming, but yeah, I will definitely use these three products over here because I have them, but don't rush out and spend your money on it like you'll be disappointed unless you swatch it in store and the bronzer works. That's all I can say. The Natasha Denona Berry Pop Cheek Trio. This is a newer release from her. It came out end of January, beginning of February for um, her Valentine's Day release. And this is beautiful. I really actually enjoy this blush. Like it's, it's kind of like the House Labs bronzer where it feels like a cream, but it's just... It's really not a cream. It just goes on so beautifully. It's pigmented. It blends out beautifully. It lasts all day. I really, really love the color. I was afraid that this was going to be too, bar too dark for my skin, but if I go in with a light hand, it looks beautiful. And then this is a cream. This is like a topper, and this is a cream, but it looks absolutely beautiful over this blush and it picks up with a brush absolutely beautifully I don't have any issues and then lastly we have the highlighter and the highlighter is stunning it's like a perfect champagne -y highlighter that has like a transparent base so it doesn't have like a line when you look straight ahead you can only see it when you turn your head I'm trying to get some reflection some reflection with the light but Anyways, this is a beautiful palette. I do really enjoy it. I really enjoy Natasha Denona products anyway, and this does not disappoint. The NARS All That Glitters palette. So this is the most recent holiday release. This is absolutely beautiful. So I used to keep this in my um, my blush drawer, but then I realized that this is actually, for me, for my skin tone, it's everything. So like this one, I can use as a bronzer as well as this one if I want like a glowier bronzer on my skin. It's a little bit orange, but I can definitely use it. And then that is a really pretty bronzer if I go in like very light handed and then this is a little scary on me as far as a blush goes but I like to use this actually as an eyeshadow it looks beautiful on the lid like absolutely stunning but for my skin tone it's a little intimidating as a blush I'm sure it looks beautiful on darker skin tones and I know that's what this is meant to do is to go across an entire array of skin tones but this is a beautiful blush on me. This one I really enjoy. It's a little bit on the peachier side. It looks really, really pretty. I love that color. It's one of my favorites in the palette. 
And then the last two that we have are these two over here. And these are actually both really pretty highlights on my skin. So we have more of a pinky highlight like right here. And then we have more of a gold highlight. So yeah, like I said, I have this in my blush drawer because it's a cheek palette. But the more I played with it and looked at it, for me... This is a face palette, so that's why I have it where I have it, but it is beautiful. I do really enjoy the formula. I think I will be a little bit more conscious about the shades that are in the palette the next time that I purchase one of these, but I do really enjoy it. I like NARS products. I think that they're beautiful. They've been around forever. They've been popular forever, and I really do like this little palette. Okay, these are the last three palettes, so let's go ahead and start with the Lunar Beauty Laura Lee Full Fantasy Blush Palette. Again, this should probably be with my blushes, but this is a full face palette for me. So you have the two highlighters over here. You have these that are all blushes, but this one is a bronzer on me, and it is a beautiful bronzer on me. So... Without further ado, let's do some swatches because this is beautiful and I am so excited for his new launch. Like I am excited as I'm filming this. It has not launched yet, but I am 100% picking it up. But look at those highlighters. Like those are beaming and both of these are wearable on my skin. Even that coppery one, what's it called? Nude Champagne. Both of them are wearable on my skin. And then we have the blushes. These blushes are beautiful. They're like my three favorite color blushes. So we have the pink, the beautiful bubblegum pink. And then we have this more berry shade, which is intimidating, but again, a light hand. And then we have the coral shade, which is called Peachy Keen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love it. And then lastly, we have this right here, which is called Sandbar. And for me, this is definitely a bronzer. Again, a light hand. These are very pigmented, but I love that I have like an all-in-one palette right here that I could travel with, that I could just pull out and do like everything with. I've used it, or I used it a lot whenever I first got it. And then of course, like everything else, it kind of gets shoved back because new stuff comes in and it's fun and exciting but that's why I want to start my shop my stash series on my channel and that's what's going to be coming after I finish my entire collection we can start that but this is a beautiful palette I really enjoy it I like the formula I don't know if this is more Laura Lee or more Lunar Beauty formula I have no idea but this is a stunning palette and I love it Okay, down to our last two palettes, and these are throwbacks. I don't even make either one of these anymore, but I just can't bring it to myself to get rid of it because I love these with everything inside of me. Let's start with this right here. This is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess palette. Like, who still has this? Probably nobody. Everybody was probably smart enough to get rid of it, but y'all... <laughs> When I tell you I loved it and I used it, like I adored this thing. It was everything. Like it actually still smells good too. It still smells like sweets. I'm not going to swatch it because it's old. I don't use it. You can't get it. There's really no point. Um, I don't even know if any of these shades are like existing shades in the collection. If you know, let me know. But I used to use both of these to set my under eyes. Sometimes I would use the pink one if I wanted to go a little brighter. Sometimes I would use this one. Sometimes I would use both. This was my go-to bronzer for the longest time. And then sometimes I would even mix in the princess cut. And then these, I usually went in and did like a quick eye look if I just wanted a quick and easy out the door look. But I loved this palette. I would 100% repurchase this palette if they were to bring it out tomorrow. I would 100% repurchase it. I would trash this one, repurchase it, and I would probably use the crap out of it. I love this palette so much. It's beautiful. It's weighty. It's luxury. And this is back when I absolutely adored Tarte, but this is beautiful and I will probably never get rid of it just because this brings a lot of memories. This was like 
I saved up a lot of money to pay for this, to afford this. So it really means a lot to me. It has a sentimental place in my heart and it's beautiful. And then lastly, we have the Benefit Blush Bar. Ugh, look at this. These were like everything. And this is the only one that I got. Again, I saved and saved and saved. And I absolutely loved this thing. It's got hard pan. It's like kind of gross, but... Um, these blushes were everything. Like I loved them so, so much. I wish I had the individuals, but I don't. And this is beautiful. I love this palette. I love this blush. These actually still work and this actually still smells really good. I could probably use it. I would definitely use it. If it was willing to work for me, I would definitely use it. But I hate that they discontinued these blushes and brought out new ones like I absolutely hate that it drives me nuts because I loved the benefit blushes I had a single one I think of this one of gold rush and I panned it like completely panned it used it all up and that was part of the reason I still have this the hula bronzer the original one is a little too dark for me and a little too warm but it's in here it's like an OG product. I've never tried the Hoola Light just because I'm not a big fan of this formula anyway. It's not my favorite. I feel like it's dated, but I have it, so I have it for reference at least. And then Dandelion, which where are we going to swatch Miss Dandelion? Let's go right here. It's beautiful. It is really beautiful. That's a horrible, horrible swatch, and I told you I wasn't going to swatch these, but... I love this palette. It's another one of those that just brings back memories that I saved a lot of money to be able to have this and to be able to use it. And it's another one that will forever be treasured in my collection. I still have the little brush. Like I used to use the brush because I didn't have a whole lot of brushes, but this is beautiful. I love it. This is the benefit that I love and I miss. And like the same thing with Tarte. Like I miss it when brands were doing that but anyways that completes our collection so that is it for bronzers highlighters and face palettes um let me know all of your thoughts down below let me know what you think um if there's anything that you want to see in particular get used i am taking notes of things for my first shot my stash like i already have the eyeshadow palette picked out but that's kind of why I'm doing this so that you can see what I have in my collection and if there's anything that jumps out at you like oh I have that I want to see you use it or you're interested in it and you haven't bought it and you just want to see it perform let me know down in the comments but that is going to be it for this video so as always I want to thank you all so so much for being here today and spending your time with me and watching my video it means so so much to me and if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up click that subscribe button before you leave and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of all my future posts here on my channel. I do post quite a few videos every week, most days if not every single day, and I wouldn't want you to miss one. But until my next video, have a good one. Bye!